that he might be the firstborn among many brethren, and whom he foreordained, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. Count these five golden links, all acts of God's own, working our salvation, and note how they are welded together in one unbreakable chain, so that all who are set upon in God's gracious, distinguishing view are carried on by His grace, step by step, up to the great consummation of that glorification which realizes the promised conformity to the image of God's own Son. It is election, you see, that does all this, for whom He foreknew them He also glorified. That fine old divine to whom we have just referred tells us further that, quote, election, having once pitched upon a man, will find him out and call him home, wherever he be. Zacchaeus, out of cursed Jericho. Abraham, out of idolatrous Ur of the Chaldeans. Nicodemus and Paul, out of the college of the Pharisees. Christ's sworn enemies. Dionysius and Damaris, out of superstitious Athens. In whatever dunghill God's jewels be hid, election will both find them out there and fetch them out from thence. End quote. Rejoice, our Savior cried. Rejoice in this, that your names are written in heaven. In that, the Lamb's book of life, which is the same old divine counsels us always to remember, is a book of love the writing of our names in which is the firstborn of all God's favors, end quote. That God has set upon just us in this his electing grace must ever be to us a matter of adoring wonder. Certain it is that there was nothing in us, whether quality or deed, which could attract his favorable notice, much less make him partial to us. And moreover, there was no respect of persons with God. We were dead dead in trespasses and sins, even as others, and therefore the children of wrath, even as they. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, and surely there has been enough ungodliness and unrighteousness in us. That God has chosen just us from among our fellows to be saved from this wrath, 1 Thessalonians 5.9, finds no explanation in us. We can only say, Yea, Father, for so it was well-pleasing in thy sight. It is all hung upon his mere good pleasure, and he has given us this unspeakable blessing for no other reason than that he has chosen to give it to us in the unsearchable counsels of his own gracious will. For as our old fine divine reminds us, we are predestined after the counsel of his own will, not after the good inclinations of ours. End quote. We have no good inclinations of will. Men dead in trespasses and sins have no good inclinations. All that is good in us, in the inclinations of our wills as in the conduct of our lives, is from Him, the product of His electing grace, and thus cannot be its cause. It is only because God has set upon us in His inexplicable love, and has predestined us to be conformed to the image of His Son, that through His calling, and justifying and sanctifying grace, all in execution of his gracious election, any good is formed in us. It is not of works, says Paul, that we are saved, but for good works. And he adds that in order that we may do these good works, we have needed to be made over, and that by so profoundly revolutionary a change that we can be looked upon as nothing less than a new creation. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, the good works which God has afore prepared that we should walk in them. The very good works which we do then have been prepared for us by God in His electing grace that we should walk in them. We are not chosen because we are good. We are chosen that we may be good. That is precisely what we are elected to. Goodness, holiness, and that, again, is what is meant by the declaration that we have been predestinated to be conformed to the image of God's Son. We can become like Him only as we become holy. Accordingly, we are told, with the richest fullness of expression, in Ephesians 1, 3 and following, that God chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blemish before Him. 
having foreordained us unto adoption as sons through Jesus Christ unto himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace. It is all here, the rooting of all our goodness in the elective decree of God, and the rooting of that decree in God's mere good pleasure. Everything else hangs on election, election itself on God alone. But what is especially emphasized is that what God has chosen us to in this electing decree is that we should be holy. It follows, therefore, that those whom God has set upon in his electing grace certainly shall be holy. This is what he has chosen them to, that they shall be holy. And having chosen them to be holy, he has not left them to themselves, but in his infinite grace has taken them in hand to make them holy. That is why he has predestinated them to be conformed to the image of his Son, and then in pursuance of this destination of them, called them, and justified them, and sanctified them, yea, and will glorify them. These are the several processes through which he frames them into the holiness to which he has chosen them. They are not shallow processes, moving only on the surface and depending on our independent cooperation to produce their effects, and therefore liable to fail because of our weaknesses and sins. In these processes, God remakes us, and therefore we emerge from them His workmanship, created unto the good works which He has afore prepared that we should walk in them. It is holy of God that we are in Christ Jesus. And being in Christ Jesus, we are new creatures. The old things have passed away, and all things have become new. As under the molding hand of God, we are being thus renewed in the spirit of our minds, we put off more and more the old man, and put on the new man, that after God hath been created in righteousness and holiness of the truth. We rejoice with trembling, because surely we see that the Lord is in this place, full of joy because we perceive the hand of God upon us, working in us both the willing and the doing, we work out our salvation with fear and trembling. That is to say, not with hesitation and doubt, lest it may not be real, but with overmastering awe that it should be so with us, that God should be the impulsive cause of all of both our willing and doing. It is precisely in this that we have the salvation of our God. For it is in this that the salvation to which we have been chosen consists, that we should be God's workmanship, created unto the good works which God has afore prepared that we should walk in them, that we should be holy, that we should be conformed to the image of God's Son. Of course, when we, when we are like Christ, we are saved men. Certainly, we do not yet see all that is included in this high destiny. But we already know that when He shall be manifested, we shall be like Him. And having this hope in us, we purify ourselves even as He is pure. Our eyes are set on the goal, and we run with steadfastness the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, looking unto Him, not only as He who has framed the faith in us by which we live in Him, and who will perfect it to the end, but also as the model to which we shall be conformed. For what we shall attain to in this salvation is nothing less than the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. The glory that he has shall be ours. And the way we shall attain to it is in the sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth. For this, says Paul, is what God chose us to from the beginning. Salvation in sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth. And to this, he adds, God also called us to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. All that is contained in this glory which Christ possesses and which we shall in him obtain, who can tell? No doubt we must cast our eyes forward to the world to come to see it all. When we shall be manifested, we shall be like him. But when we obtain it all, it is still the salvation to which God chose us from the beginning in sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth. These are the means through which that is reached. Clearly, God has not chosen us to sloth. The salvation to which he has chosen us 
is a salvation in sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. We've not been chosen to any salvation which does not stand in sanctification by the Spirit and faith in the truth. If we do not believe the truth, if we are not being sanctified by the Spirit, we have been, we have been chosen to no salvation. What we have been chosen to is that we should be holy and without blemish before God. We cannot profess to be chosen of God then unless we are becoming holy and without blemish before Him. It is not possible that there should be an elect race which is not also a holy nation. A holy nation which shows forth the excellencies of Him who has called us out of darkness into His marvelous light. Seeing that predestination is conformity to the image of God's Son, we are not predestinated unless we are being conformed to the image of God's Son. Unless we are like Christ, we cannot share in His glory. It is idle then to dream profanely that being elected to bliss, we may be careless of good works. Precisely what God has prepared for His elect is good works, that they shall walk in them, whereunto in His grace He has created them. Precisely what He requires of them who believe His gracious assurances is therefore that they be careful to maintain good works, in order that they may give a good account of themselves in the world. Titus 3.8 Faith and good works are the characteristics of God's elect, and where faith and good works are not, there are no elect. There is no election, then, to the rewards of glory, which does not include in itself, as the indispensable means to this end, election to the works of grace. 